Some might say that episode three of The Walking Dead Dead City was kind of a boring and dull chapter compared to the first two episodes, but this episode had a whole lot of character development, and it gave us a chance to dive into things that we haven't really gotten a chance to just yet. Here are my spoiler-filled thoughts on episode number three of Dead City, People Are a Resource. Now episode three is definitely a character development chapter and it gives us a chance to not only chip away at the Croat and his sanctuary and kind of what's going on there and kind of getting into his head a little bit, but it also gives us a chance to dive into Negan and Maggie's really complicated relationship as well. We get to see where these two characters are at at this point in their journey because they are in a very different place in a very different situation, um, both alone and with each other than either of them have ever gotten to see before and definitely where we saw them at the end of The Walking Dead and even years before during the All Out War storyline. I get the sense that Negan really does care for Maggie and he feels remorse for what has happened. Even the showrunner talked about the fact that Negan has a desire and has a need to be there for people. And even though he has done terrible things and even though he has this awful history behind him, which we see constantly plaguing him with the wanted papers um, and, and kind of the way that people look at him and uh, the way he has to kind of wrestle with himself in these moments, it, it proves how good of an actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan is. Um, but you can see that there's remorse there. You can see he's thinking about the things he's done and about this journey before him I think he sees this entire journey with Maggie trying to save Herschel as a moment of he has to do this for her regardless of whether he wants to or not that's off the table that's not even a part of the equation but I think he has a desire to be there for her because of what's happened this is a part of his redemption arc my favorite moment from the episode was when Negan, of course, talking about himself and the third person without the members of the tribes people even realizing it, uh, talking about how he built an army of psychopaths and, you know, he forced people to join and if they didn't, the hammer came down. And I loved the moment that when he said, what happened? And Maggie said, it worked. And the smile on Negan's face, there was just something about that moment that almost you almost get the idea that he's thankful for what Rick and uh, and Alexandria and Oceanside and the Sanctuary and Hilltop. They, you, you, it's like it, he's thankful for what happened. Like, they saved him from that version of himself. And I think, yes, while he's still Negan, he's still going to say and do things that are very Negan-esque. Um, it, it almost seems like he's proud or thankful of the fact that they, they, they rescued him from that version of himself. They rescued him from that chapter of his life, even though he didn't realize he needed to be rescued from it. And I think him living this way, him trying to help Maggie, him doing these things is a way of regaining that piece of himself and regaining his humanity. Because at the end of the day, The Walking Dead is about keeping your humanity. Can you keep your humanity when you are faced with these awful circumstances, having to do these awful things? That's kind of the big overall question of the show and of the universe and this whole storyline. It really is true what Rick and Herschel said to the governor in season four in Too Far Gone when Rick told him we get to come back. Negan is living proof of the fact that we get to come back and we're seeing this play out in real time. And the moment where Negan and Maggie are talking and he says, I can shut up contrary to popular belief and whatever else. And Maggie's pulling out um, the picture of Glenn and the watch and she's pulling out pictures of them. And it's such an emotional moment when she says, the last that I have of these people are in this box. And of course there's the awkward tension of Negan took that from her. Negan took those people from her in a way. Um, and it's just kind of having to see them wrestle with that and be forced to work together. Um, it, even though they're not saying it, you know that there are emotions stirring in them that they never thought they would feel for one another. And I don't mean in a romantic way, um, but I mean, it, in a way, they're building a weird, brutal friendship with each other um, and an understanding that they haven't gotten to in the past. We also dive a little bit more into the Croat and his psychotic mind, making the dude eat the key. That was, I mean, that's messed up. He, he almost reminds me of the governor in a sense. He's a man of science, so he's intellectual and he's methodical, but he's psychotic. He's got like the psychoticness of the governor or an alpha, but he's got the 
uh, the charisma and the, the know-it-allness uh, of Neen. He's turning out to be a pretty cool villain, even when he threw him in the pits. It's like he's a weird experimental doctor kind of just taking advantage of the situation uh, to, to aid his study and to aid uh, this awful thing that he's building in Madison Square Garden. He is definitely in a whacked out mental state and it makes you think, you know, are the Barazzi really, really taken care of and are they loyal to him? Does he just tell them what they want to hear? Because he obviously doesn't seem like he really cares about them. Uh, it just, it seems like a very interesting dynamic there. They're obviously scared of him in a sense um, and he's he's got the smarts to be methodical about things you can tell that uh, he's not a good person and that this if, if he was not a if he was not a good person before the apocalypse has completely changed him now, as for the lack of action in the episode, no, it was not a super action-packed, intense episode, but it was emotionally intense. We're building these characters and their relationships, and we're exploring more of Negan and Maggie's relationship, and we're exploring the Croat and kind of the, the psychotic uh, nature of what's in going on in his mind and in his head and what he's trying to do and build in Madison Square Garden. And it's interesting, if you've seen the preview for next week's episode, it looks super, super active action-packed as they're going into the subway system and into the sewers to try to get up in there to save Herschel. I find it interesting we haven't seen Herschel yet since that first or second episode, um, and I'm very curious to see what's going on inside of there. But it's going to be interesting to see how Herschel reacts to Negan helping Maggie get him out of there, because Herschel has obviously already threatened Negan before. He knows Negan is the one who killed his dad. And it's just the, the relationships, I've said it from the beginning, the relationships in this show are what make it so interesting and they've managed to push it over the top with the uh, the scenery and New York kind of crumbling 15 years into the apocalypse and they've managed to to add things to the lore and to the universe and to the world that we haven't necessarily seen before so I'm really still digging it and I think there's a lot of very cool things to come. So as always, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Happy 4th of July. New episodes of our shows premiere every single week at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at LTM Podcast KY. If you have not joined the Let's Talk Movies Facebook group, as soon as you're done here, I need you to go to Facebook and I need you to type in Let's Talk Movies YouTube channel dash community page. Join the group. We have a good time there. It's the quickest way to get updates on everything going on here at the channel. Guys, as always, be good to each other and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.